Welcome to this quick tour of some of the things Cleviscope can do for you. Here we're capturing a video signal. We've got a total duration of 40 milliseconds. Let's explore this waveform. First we can display the tracking graph. The tracking graph shows a close-in view of what's on the scope graph. You can use a scope graph as the master and the tracking graph as the slave in navigating through the waveform. As you see, uh, as I drag the tracer around, the tracking graph follows. Once we're in the tracking graph, we can expand or contract as necessary. We can zoom using the zoom tool. We can place markers. And up here we can see the marker values. When the graph is live, the tracking graph tracks the live waveform as well. We can go to the trigger point by clicking on the zero button. To stabilize the display to the vertical sync position, we can use Cleviscope's dual trigger system. Trigger two, we start using it, it's now stabilized. We can use the dual trigger system to trigger on slope. As I make the frequency higher, we go to the slope is too fast, it, we stop triggering. In the correct range, it's triggering. Make the slope too slow, it stops triggering. We can use the dual trigger system to look for abnormal edges. Here we have edges that are rising at about 30 nanoseconds. Let's see if there's any edges that take longer than 30 nanoseconds. Well, 50 nanoseconds in this case. Here we discovered a runt pulse. And here, we discovered a pulse with a long slew. This could be a FET not turning on properly in a power supply system. We can also use persistence to see edges that are not correct. Here we're capturing an SBI data stream. Say we wanted to trigger on the third block in. We can use triggering to do this. Now we're on the third block in. Here we're capturing the SBI data stream in both the digital and analog domains. If we want to decode the serial data stream, we can turn the protocol on. Now it's being decoded. We can decode a number of protocols. We can decode using either the analog channels or the digital channels. We've got setups for each of the different types of decoders. Our triggering can include digital patterns. Here's a pattern for 0, don't care, 1. If the pattern is met, the analog trigger triggers. If the pattern is not met, it won't trigger. We'll turn the required on, and now we see that we only trigger when the pattern is met. Of course, we can include digital inputs as trigger sources. Here we are using the repetitive method of capturing a signal to increase the sample resolution. Our resolution is 200 picoseconds. We're using annotations to explain the graph. We've placed markers at the 10% and 90% points. We're using the signal information to show the rise and fall times, about 4 nanoseconds. The duration of the pulse is about 28 nanoseconds. This example is also using the external sampling clock. The external sampling clock, running at 101.23 megahertz, can range in values from 1 megahertz to 120 megahertz. The external sampling clock is a useful tool if you need to synchronize to a particular data stream, for example a video stream. Here we introduce a number of other Cleviscope features. We have a signal generator coming out the back of the Cleviscope. This is controlled by the signal generator control panel. We have a spectrum display that shows the spectra of the signal being captured. We have a signal information display which shows the signal information display, signal information of either the scope, tracker or spectrum display or maths which I'll introduce later. On the control panel we have some channel controls. We can enable or disable a channel, we can set its coupling, we can turn a filter on or off and we have a number of options there and we can set the probe attenuation. We can display gain phase plots. In this case we've got a filter attached. Let's start a sweep. Here's the gain phase plot of the filter. We can display 
results in log format and use log stepping. The Cleviscope gain phase system can be used to measure the response of power supplies to ensure that the power supply stability criteria are met, even in the presence of large amounts of noise. Here we're looking at a 5 volt flyback power supply operating 1.5 amps output. As you can see, there's a lot of switching noise in the output of the power supply, but we are getting a clean gain phase plot. Once the plot is complete, we can use the tool FR for frequency response 0 dB button to calculate the 0 dB and 0 gain points. This system uses the built-in signal generator. As you can see, it's sweeping, and it's sweeping in steps of just under 6 hertz. Right, we have both zero degrees and zero phase, so we'll calculate the values, positions the markers, and we can see here that uh, we, at the zero gain point, which occurred at 941 hertz, we have 64 degrees phase margin. And at the zero degree phase per position, which happened at 24.28 kilohertz, we had minus 33 dB of gain margin. So this is a good power supply. We've touched on the signal information display. It's very useful for telling you some of the parameters of the signal. In this situation, we're looking at the frequency, which is varying between 500 hertz and 100 kilohertz, which is what the signal generator is outputting. If we want to use this in an external application, such as Excel, we can copy and paste a DDE link. So here's the one for frequency. And we paste it into Excel. And it's live. The signal information can also do logging. Click show logging and we can log into an Excel file or into a text file. Here I'm choosing to log frequency into an Excel file. I'll start logging. It brings up the Excel file and it starts logging to it. Once we've finished we can then use the Excel file for our own purposes. For example we could make a uh, a graph in within the Excel. There we are. As you can see, this is very similar to the one that we recorded ourselves. We're just going to generate a small set of pulses that we'll be using in a moment in de demonstrating charting. So there's some pulses. There's 30 of them. Uh, we'll zoom in. And you can see that each pulse is about 2.3 microseconds wide. Now I'm going to show you streaming to disk using the chart button. We click the chart button to start and the scope graph starts acquiring. We'll sweep the signal generator. Now we'll press the button that made the 30 pulses. And you can see the recorded peak captured even though we're zoomed way out to many seconds. Made a few. Over here we can see that the resolution is one microsecond, the sample rate is a megahertz. We've sampled 30 mega samples so far. We have 339 gigabytes of storage left on this machine. We can sample at up to 1.5 mega samples per second and down as low as 100 samples per second. That's probably enough for now. Uh, you can do this all night if you want to. So we'll stop. Once we've captured, uh, we can zoom in. So let's go and look at the pulses. And you can see that we captured the 30 pulses correctly.
as you can see, panning and zooming is fast. Charting is very useful for capturing long run problems and using the pan and zoom to find evidence of your issues. Cleviscope includes a very powerful maths capability. You enter equations which are freeform and use functions to process the inputs and the inputs are the channels A to D, the digital inputs I1 to I8 using operators, these are they. And you have a large number of functions which you can't see here. In addition, the entire signal can be processed by processes and here are the processes that are available. Some of the processes cause us to use external programs such as MATLAB. You can run MATLAB live. In addition, you can control the signal generator, save to the disk, and output values to the link output using the maths equation builder process. Let's get on and have a look at the actual signal that we're capturing. It's this one. Channel A is the current measured when a cell phone makes a periodic request to the cell site uh, to tell it that it's there. Channel B is the voltage of the battery. As you can see, the battery has some internal impedance, and so we see a voltage drop across it when the cell phone turns on. In addition, you can see that the cleviscope scales the input range so that the A to D that's used is presented just across the range of interest to us, in this case 3.3 to 4.3 volts. Cleviscope includes the ability to scale and name all of the analog values. In this situation we've used the math display to display power and energy in the correct units, watts and nanojoules. Up here in the marker and tracer positions we see values are displayed also in millijoules and watts. And in the signal information we've set the source to maths so we also get the correct units, watts and joules. Let's take a quick look at how the maths equation builder has been used here. We've taken channel A and multiplied it by channel B, that's current times voltage, that's power. We're using a 0.33 ohm sensor resistor, so we divide it by 0.33. Then we send it channel A in the maths equation builder, sorry, in the maths display. So that's power. Then we take the power, which is in channel A, and we multiply it by a thousand because we'd like to display the results in millijoules. Then we integrate it and send it to channel B. Up here is the integral, as you can see. By looking at the difference between the start and end values of the integral, we can evaluate the total energy that was up during that pulse. And we see it's either around 4 millijoules or around 10 millijoules or so. It varies. We can use the math system to experiment with the, out, with the processed values of signals we've got. For example, here we're showing uh, two signals. One is a uh, 400 kilohertz signal and the other one we can vary with the signal generator. What we're doing is we're multiplying the two together. This is amplitude modulation and we should be able to see the sidebands generated by doing this. And as well as that we've implemented a filter. So here's the, here's the uh, math equation builder set up. A times B is the amplitude modulation and we send it to channel A and here you can see it. Then we take the A channel and we modify it with filter 0. If we go to set filter, we can see the filter settings. Here we can t set the type of topology, uh, what kind of type it is, uh, and the minimum and maximum frequencies and how much attenuation we expect. And here's the result. And we've set a filter from 300 to 320 kilohertz. The result of that is shown on the spectrum display. We can set the spectrum display to source its values from maths. So now uh, you can see that the signal that we are outputting to the channel B in the math graph is below minus 50 dB. Now, as we run the amplitude signal that we're modulating with upwards in frequency, you can see that we are now entering the passband of that filter, and therefore channel B has got much larger. And as we pass by it, 
goes back down again. So in this way we can illustrate amplitude modulation. It's quite common, in fact, to process signals in some way. Using the Maths Equation Builder, you can do a lot of the processing in software before you go and implement it in your own hardware. If you want even higher Maths firepower, you can pipe the results to MATLAB, do work there, and bring them back. In this example, we've connected a piece of wire to channel A. So it's just receiving the local radio stations. You can see them all clustered over here. I'm going to capture one sample and then do some processing on it. If we look at the radio, radio stations, um, these are all the local AM stations. These ones here are, are quite well known ones. This is 1080, which is a, a News Talk ZB. Anyway, um, the goal here is to isolate that 1080 radio station and then pipe the results to MATLAB and demodulate it. MATLAB has a demodulation function called amdmod. Uh, we need to run this equation to, to do it. Here's the equation we're going to run. So function z does the work and we're going to receive values from, from the clever scope, we call it c scope. The two channels we're going to pipe are x and y, we'll just use a. We get the number of samples the time at which the samples were sent, the uh, interval between samples, and the trigger position in the frame. From this, we're going to set FC, which is the frequency of the carrier, 1080000, and we'll just calculate the sample frequency at 1 over dt, and we'll do the demodulation and send it back to Cleviscope. So, let's do this in steps. First of all, Let's just show you what the filter is. So we're looking at filter 0, and I've set it up to be a bandpass filter between 1.05 MHz and 1.1 MHz. That's going to pull out the 1.08 MHz that we're looking at. Uh, so let's just turn that on and apply it. And you can see here now, we just have the one frequency in the channel A. Um, now, what I want to do is actually process the full data set. So I need to get frame, so I do that now. And that transfers the entire sample set from the Cleviscope to the PC memory. And now I'm going to activate the MATLAB equation by going Apply Equations. And you can see up here it's done. MATLAB has been used to demodulate the signal. Now that you've done all this work, you should record your results. It's easy to do it with copy and paste. Go to the graph, Control c for copy, find something to paste into, e.g. Word, and go paste. Now you can write about it. It's very easy to do this as you go. We hope you've enjoyed this quick tour. You can visit our website to find other tutorials, look at our products, and get other resource materials that can help you understand what you can do with Cleviscope and how you can apply it to your problem. Thank you.